Welcome to the show, everyone. We are going to have a ton of fun today. I am so excited about bringing on my first guest who has been on with me before. We are networking. This show is now not just on radio. It is also, uh, we all know we are on Facebook, so it's now visual as well. So you guys on Facebook, hi to everybody out there. Like us and follow us. We're going to be sharing the show a little bit later. To anybody who may be already an American Indian art lover, but also if you're not, you're going to love this segment because you're going to fall in love with it. My first guest is Bill Faust, and he's the owner of Faust Gallery in Scottsdale. You also have some a place in New Mexico as well. A gallery there too. Yes, you do. <laughs> and uh, I want you to tell everybody a little bit about yourself and what you do. Listen up. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the coolest stuff I've ever seen. I shouldn't even call it. It's beautiful art. Oh, thank you, Carol. It's a pleasure to be on again. Yeah, I've been doing this for 40 years, believe it or not. My great aunt was the first buyer and manager of the Hearst Museum gift shop. She started there in 1969, and I was fortunate enough to be a kid while she was doing all this. So I've been around this all my life. And it's an exciting art form. It's been around for years and years. Um, and I kind of wanted to follow up and give, you know, last time I did jewelry, so this time I thought I'd give a little overview on Indian art especially to those people who really don't know anything about it. It's, it's native to Arizona, it's cultural, New Mexico too, and it's, it's so much fun to enjoy and you know, be a part of your life. It's a history. I was telling you that there's so much that you can talk about and so people can learn from. Uh, you can also, if you're a collector, obviously we're going to talk a little about some of the things that people can collect. Uh, your your gallery has anywhere from you know the uh, the jewelry to Indian baskets to kachinas to all sorts of things. And right. the one thing that I I remember you saying more than anything is that how it's changed so much constantly evolving in fact kind of the follow-up on our last show we did vermin a patwa show she's the niece of charles lolima and i wanted your audience to see a modern bracelet contemporary what they do today so vermin's got that with ebony woods ironwood turquoise coral and a little bit of lapis and then gold accents in there so it really is updated modern, what i want people to see is the unique. thickness of it too. Look at how beautiful that is. Yeah, and then so like here's a pendant she did too. And this is an 18 karat gold. So it's precious metal with gemstones that is everlasting, beautiful, and just everyday wearable. It's everyday wearable and it's a piece of art uh, that is all, it's just stunning is My what it is. My always said, wearable art. Wearable art is what it is. Go ahead. Wearable art. And so Verma, so not only her, but another state of where American Indian jewelry has gone, like James Fox did this handbag out of sterling silver. And you can see it just clasps like this. Every day you can just carry it. He can put a, a, a handle on it so you can carry it, you know, a strap on there. So it's really cool. I gotta show this just piece. Let different. me just tell you. Totally it different. is so different. It is a conversation piece. I hope that people can see that well there. It is absolutely it's stunning. I mean, it's just absolutely stunning. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. Carry it every day. Put your phone in there. Then another artist, just so people know, I mean, American Indian jewelry and art is, is international. This is a piece by Cody Sanderson. So Cody was in the gallery over the show that we did, and he actually sells to the whole Asian market. He's got collectors all over the world for his work. And that's not your everyday Navajo piece of jewelry. No, that you would never think of that. Yeah, exactly. Anybody would wear this. And Rock and roll star. To give you an idea, Lady Gaga even has. What did I just say? <laughs> Isn't that funny? I just said that. I didn't know, but oh, it looks yeah. like it. That's She's awesome. She's his things. Wow. So American Indian art and jewelry especially is international. It's all over, all over the world. And then I thought I'd give you a little overview on something, you know, older, like, I've got these um, baskets. So this is actually an Apache basket. So this was probably made around 1910. This one's in mint condition. It's gorgeous. Really beautiful. You look at the weave on that. It's super fine. Yeah, it's unbelievable and that they did this by their hands. By their hands. And I wanted you know the audience to know that right now is a great time to collect baskets because they're down in the market. You can buy them relatively inexpensively. That was about a $1,500 basket around 2008, and it's $900 today. So when they will eventually go up. 
And then this is another Arizona basket. This is Pima. So, Look at that. You know, and that used to be worth $3,500, believe it or not, and it's $700 today. So to, it's something that you want. This is the kind of information, why I like my show so much. It's great information for people. Most people don't realize. And we know, do have a lot of is. investors that yep. listen to this station. That's the kind of people that do listen in. And this is the kind of thing that would hear hearing this. You would never even have thought about it. You might be thinking of investing just in the market, but in right. art, there's nothing like it. And boy, that never goes, well, it can go up and down in a different way. Absolutely. I mean, and that's a service that me as a gallery owner does. I mean, I can tell you where the market is, what's collectible, what's stable, you know, like certain artists, where, where to go with your money if that's what you're looking to do is collect in them. Um, that's my service. So happy to help anybody who wants advice. Now, um, I've been on your website, and mm -hmm. I really love it because you can see a lot of your what your pieces that you have there, and they're beautiful. They're you know, you've taken beautiful pictures of right. them. I also love the story as well. You well, know, your stories, story. They uh, mean a lot. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Now, his website is Faust, F-A-U-S-T Gallery. Dot com. They're rated with the Better Business Bureau. Um, they're right on Main Street in, 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 Scottsdale. in Scottsdale. They also have a gallery in New Mexico. Mm -hmm. And uh, you can call them and talk to them. Uh, you want to go in and see some beautiful... This is not just... This is... Uh, it's, it's collectible art. Totally it's, collectible. It's museum quality. We also want to talk about that. Right. Oh, like this could be in a museum easy. Any of these pieces. This could be in a museum. Verma's, Verma's pieces are in the museum. The her museum did, did a show on her, actually. So, I mean, all of this is, this is museum quality. In fact, there, um, the Mayak Museum in New Mexico is doing a whole show on glass, native glass artists, and Ira's included in that. So, and here I'll just talk about Ira now, if you want. I mean, he's Navajo. Um, it's a whole new medium for American Indian artists. I don't um, know if everybody can see it, so pull it on over here a little tiny bit. So I'm going to let you do that. I'll take the lid off. You can hold it. It's if you want. gorgeous. Go ahead. So that is all glass that has been blown. And then there's two different colors that he mixes in it. And then what he did, he blocked it off and he sandblasted the design in there. It's gorgeous. And that's what makes, makes the design. So, and this could go anywhere, on a shelf, on a desk, anywhere. And it's so contemporary, and I had mentioned earlier that uh, when I we were talking about the piece, is that you would have never thought that is, as American Indian art, right? Not it doesn't even look like it. It's I mean, very different in may, itself. Maybe the pod itself. He's been lucky because he ended up doing, there's a hotel in Albuquerque, and he did the whole chandelier in that hotel. Oh, Pretty amazing. Unbelievable. Now, before we go to a break, I, wanted, I want you to be able to tell them why, for you, your love of it. Mm -hmm. You know, just let's talk about that for a second. Well, I think it's it, it, it just the beauty of it, really. I mean, you know, I love my aunt dearly. We were very, very close. And then just watching her interaction with the people, I mean, we're not, we don't just broker for these people. We actually become very close friends with them. Mm -hmm. And it's just fun to, you know, be in a partnership together where we can enjoy, you know, selling things, of course, but at least passing on the beauty to other people so they can enjoy it. We have huge history here. Yes. And, and, you know, you ship everywhere, right? Do you all ship over the world. all over the world? And these are mu museum quality, and uh, you can check them out on their website. They, all of the stuff. I can't wait to talk about our little Kachina doll here. Oh, That's great. just some really cool looking thing. Okay, we have Faust, F A U S T Gallery.com. They're rated with the Better Business Bureau. Their phone number is 480 200 4290. Something different here on Networking Arizona. We're going to continue talking, okay? okay. Mm -hmm. So, because we're still live. Because we're still live. On, okay. So, I just want to kind of talk about, you know, for you, um, in your, in your, when you work with people, okay? Some people have never, ever even, you know, they're interested, they love it, they see it, and they walk in and they say, how pretty. You take somebody from somebody who doesn't ever known what they've even ever done before or even thought they would like and kind of guide them, correct? Exactly. What's it like? Uh, well, it's a, it's, it's a, 
it's a process for the buyer because they're learning and trying to mentally think, you know, what it is they really like. And then you're trying to explain to them why they should like it. And, you know, some, I never really push buyers. Either they really want it or they don't because the art sells itself. Mm -hmm. So right. that's really the be benefit of it. Is it like, for instance, um, your artists that you have that were just at the um, gallery, the, uh, the um, open house that you right. had, do they um, have people that they buy from all the time and they always use, like, you know, they buy from that particular artist? Or do people buy from all? Everybody. Everybody. I mean, it's mixed. I mean, once you get the bug, I mean, that's really it. You, it becomes a habit. It really is a habit. Because you start collecting and you get the bug and you might buy this artist and then buy that artist and then before you know, you're just a collector. Yeah. And so for you, what is your favorite do you have a favorite? Is it hard to say? It, that's hard to say. I mean, I love Burma. I've known her forever. We've been very close friends. Um, I love it all. That's really what my passion is all of it. That's why I sell all of it. There are galleries now who have broken themselves down and actually specialized in just pottery or specialized in just weavings, you know, specialized in only jewelry. I'm going to make you talk about that. Not me. You? I just love it all. Do you have that Faust um, gallery one coming on soon? I'd love for him to hear it. Okay. This is the kind of stuff you're careful with. Oh, yeah. Now, can you imagine a house that had you had I the <laughs> This commercial will be the first one right after the segment. Okay. At the bottom of the hour. Okay. I get your habits all the time. <laughs> Are we going on to on, on target at all? Oh, we're doing good. Because okay. <laughs> I never do. That's I might get done quicker than I thought. <laughs> so welcome back. We're talking with Bill Faust, and he's the owner of Faust Gallery right here, right here in Scottsdale. We have the most wonderful, beautiful American Indian history, art, jewelry. And at the break, we were talking a little bit to everybody on Facebook, and I had asked you if you had a favorite, and right. what was your answer? Um, I really, really don't. I love it all. I'm very close with Verma. I was very close with Charles Lolema, and the jewelry is a passion of mine. But I love all the art. I mean, and I also like what you said, uh, which was you don't really have to sell anything. The, no. the art, the jewelry is art itself, and it sells itself. No, it's all visual, and I think people, they, they, they either love it, or they want to move on and find something different. You know? Right. You don't really have to push it and sell it. And so um, what we were talking about, I said I want you to have your own show one day, right? And I said, you know, you can just talk about this forever. Forever. And there's so much history in each piece, each, each well, each artist, uh, where they come from, right? I was right. loving you talking a little bit about, for people that didn't hear that just tuned in from the break, about the baskets, how baskets right now today are a wonderful thing to invest in, you said. Absolutely. So when you wait, they come to your gallery, they could buy those baskets, right? right Absolutely. At a very affordable, unbelievably affordable price, right. and they're going to only go up. They'll only go up. And money. I'll never forget, because we were at an auction right after the market crashed in 08. And if I'd have had a bank full of money, I'd have bought every basket there, because an $85,000 basket sold for $16,000 which is just unbelievably low. Right. So it just goes to show you the economics of everything, you know, how the market shifts and goes up and down. And that happens in anything. Um, and, it, it, you know, that's why I'm an asset, because I can explain that to clients that come in the gallery and tell you what you really should start collecting. Right. And, and you know what? It's a bug. He said you get the bug. Yeah. Right, you come in and you and you're interested in it. It's pretty, and you're looking at it, and you might buy one or two things, and then the next thing you become a lover of the, uh, let's say, an artist, and you buy that, and you come in and you see, and it just goes, grows and grows and grows. Oh yeah, I had a lady come in uh, back in October, and I had just gotten a bunch of rugs that were clean, 
and you know some of them needed repair and she says well just give me the the, the price for what it is and the condition it's in now. Well, I don't want to put the money in repairing it. I just want to buy it now. And she bought like five rugs. She just took them back to Alabama and she sent me pictures of where she put them around the house. <laughs> it oh, was how great. Neat. It was See? neat. And, and listen, you do what you want with it. They're wearable, our art, right. museum quality. We want to explain that these are museum quality. But I also want to talk to, because remember you would, the last time you were here, you, were, you, you have anywhere from... On the lower end, you do. I oh, saw. I, I wanted to talk a little bit about that because you know when we talk about this, I don't even. I didn't even ask you how much some of these things are, but it doesn't matter, right? Yeah. When you love it, it's art. It's something that you're buying right. that's so quite different. But you also might want to come in and buy something that's less money. Well, I actually, you know, I market for everybody. So, because especially in Scottsdale, you get tourists from all over, mm -hmm. a younger generation. They can't afford buying a piece of Irma's. Mm -hmm. So I have other art that's just as nice, beautiful, and affordable in the $300 range. Or right. More. So, so something is there for everyone. Everybody. Yeah. Not everything's thousands of dollars. Right. I, that, I did want to say that. And I also wanted to ask you the difference, though, before we talk about our Mr. Kachina here. Yeah. Um, I wanted to ask you what the difference was, you know, because we do have a lot of little shops, like in, you know, Old Town Scottsdale, right, right that are carry a lot of different things. Right. Right. What's the difference between you and someone like them? So I, I do tend to, to uh, market more to the upper clientele, um, which means everything that I have can end up in a museum someday because the museum would want to own it. Um, some of the other shops sell, they actually do sell some things that were made overseas illegally. And it's hard to, um, you know, it's hard for me to say who they are, but I know who they are. And you just have to really know the person you're buying things from. I'm going to tell you, if they have five of them, the same thing right now, that's it's, probably not, you know, museum quality. Right. But but we know that. and But we I want you, people to know that, too, you want to be careful. Right. And, you know, this is where you come in. You are the owner of this gallery. You've right. been a, into it for 40 years, you said. Oh, yeah. 40 years. And he can help if you want to learn to invest, if you want to just buy something special for yourself or whatever, he can help guide you. He can right. help you understand. And, and honestly, if I don't have it, there's five other really good galleries in Scottsdale, and I'm happy to direct you to them. Now, because they're great. They're great, too. His website is Faust, F-A-U-S-T, gallery.com. They're rated with the Better Business Bureau. And uh, go on to, in Scottsdale, it's on Main Street and Scottsdale Road. And um, their phone number to call, you want to call and talk, to them it is 480-200-4290 i know you have a couple more pieces here so i'm going to pick let you pick which one i okay. mean let's talk about the kachina yeah. so this is a koshari clown kachina and this is done by wilmer k and wilmer is actually verma's brother so and what wilmer do, did that is different than most kachina carvers is, is he'll do a kachina and he'll put humor in it and so this is a, a clown, and the clowns run around. They're in the plaza dancing, and they'll pull anybody out of the audience and make fun of them. This particular one is actually attacking a turkey, which eventually they probably will kill and eat it. <laughs> Thanksgiving. <laughs> Thanksgiving right then and there. <laughs> so, and, and another thing to point out is the way this is carved is totally different for like, because I knew Barry Goldwater and his collections at the Heard Museum. And he was fortunate, Barry was fortunate enough to find some really, really old kachinas from the 1800s. And this one is modernly carved, it's exquisitely done, highly detailed, which is what most kachina carvers are doing today. And part of the reason that happened was because when it became illegal to use eagle feathers, they had to come up with the idea of carving their own feathers and that kind of thing. So oh. it actually pushed them See, into becoming history. more, uh, more creative. In, in in doing their kachina dolls. I, I also want to say uh, that there's kachina dolls and there's kachina dolls. Right. This is an, it's carved out of wood. What right. kind of wood? Um, Do you know? They're all, to be correct, they all have to be carved out of cottonwood root. Okay. The root of a cottonwood tree. And the other thing to note about kachinas is, is the Hopis, they do their dances on the plazas. And there's almost a kachina for every living thing. So it, it actually, they actually play their whole cultural value system out on the plaza for the young people and old people alike in, in a way how you should socially act with them in the Pueblo. 
Now, do you have medium size, large size, oh, all oh, sorts yeah. of different sizes? Yeah. Yeah, right. and um, the dolls are just uh, phenomenal. I mean, and, and you can see the expression in the face. You know, you can see so much in this, so much detail in it. It's unbelievable. You really ought to see it uh, up close. So you have to go to the gallery and check it out. And again, Carol, Kachinas really are undervalued. I mean, there was a time where this would sell for around $8,500. And today, I mean, this is $3,600. So, you know, another they, good investment. They came down another good investment because they came down to the market changed everything, and and the carvers had to adapt to the new market. So, so have the uh, and I have to ask this with with COVID and everything has mm -hmm. it affected? I mean, because of the oh horrific. Let's talk horrific. about that for a minute. Do you mind? Yeah, no, not at all. I mean, every single show that the artists do has been canceled. Mm -hmm. And see, I kind of parallel on some of those shows. And without those shows, the income has drastically been mm -hmm. not there. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, we're actually all on pins and needles now because we're hoping that Santa Fe Indian Market happens. And they're talking about doing a half show, you know, half virtual show and half live show. So we'll see that big announcement's going to be on April 1st. Wow, so it's interesting. And there's a lot of people out there, especially when you live here, right, in right. the Southwest and, and liking that type of that Indian, American Indian art. A lot of folks out there love it. This is museum quality. What would be your words that you want to leave? And I, I said I was going to let you run the show. I didn't really let you run the show 100%. <laughs> okay. But I would love for you to just let like let you talk for about a minute or so to end this thing. Then Oh, um, well, let's see. Really, I mean, for, for your guest, it really is something to look at it's, it's local art, local artists, actually. Um, culturally um, in, important to Arizona, New Mexico, and the Southwest. And um, it actually is something that will benefit your life. It really will. And you know what? Just learning, just having you here the two times I have, I've learned mm -hmm. so much. And I have become in love with some of these pieces are just absolutely stunning. And I hope you come back again sometime because to. we really can learn so much from this. Whether if you are an investor, they ship uh, all over the world. All over the world. All over the world. We are talking about, um, you know, we're talking about museum quality, but they also have anything for some of the lesser expensive th items. But also when you go in there, you'll learn so much. You might just want to invest in something. And you never know. You might buy a basket today that's like $700, that could end up in a museum. You just never know. Check them out on their website. They have beautiful pictures there, too. It's Faust, F-A-U-S-T, gallery.com.